eons of tyranny, the demon god Adir was finally overthrown by humanity. Though fear of his terrible power endured. And so was formed the hallowed Sentinels, our duty being to stand vigil for signs of his return. Even exile to another realm could not silence the fallen god forever. And in time, Adir's malignant influence pervaded the world once more. In his hunger for vengeance, Adir orchestrated the return of his demonic army. Light was swallowed by shadow, and with it, hope. A new, grim champion arises. The Dark Crusader. And perhaps it will indeed come to pass that only they who shun the light in order to fight the darkness possess the power to defy a god. To be fair, that was a skill issue. Gets knocked into the umbral and then can't defend himself. Why is that intro video so darn loud? My goodness, I'm going to edit it down for you guys, but whew, blows my eardrums out. It's the first time we tried to run it. It was glitching and lagging all over the place, which is not a great return to this game. A lot of the lagginess was an issue for us, but fortunately, I haven't played this game in so long. I barely remember anything, so what we're going to do here is we're going to play through and go step by step. I'm just going to play it the way I'd imagine a new player would play it, as I'm virtually mentally a new player here. I haven't played this in so long, so many games in between, and I didn't like this game the first time nearly as much as I'd hoped. A lot of annoying content, the ambushes that were completely unnecessary and unrealistic, the boss fights 13 seconds later turning into regular mobs that you have to fight with the same strength, the only boss difficulty really being a ton of HP slapped onto every frame. It, there were a lot of complaints I had about the first early version of this game. I've heard there's been a lot of changes, a lot of things have been shifted around, maybe less mob density, so you don't feel like it's a slog fest going from boss to boss to boss. Now, I'm not one of the people that wants barely any mobs in between or super easy pushover mobs. I like to earn what I got, but the game originally had some issues with mob density. It was just far too many to even be realistic. I got really good at this game and had a blast when I was playing multiplayer. I remember that. Co-op was hilariously fun so i might drag others into this in a little bit but for right now we're just going to start off new we're going to pick some kind of wild style and we'll talk about it in the comments whether or not we're playing a heavy weapons dealer a sword and board quick you know whatever we'll pick a style of character but this if i remember correctly this game is really flexible with how you can modify your character so it doesn't really matter what you start with as long as you kind of grab the right weapons for that make sure you guys go down if you want to see this one again hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and then we'll jump right into this
I get that. She's angry. Whoever she is. Forgive me. I'd steer this weapon of deliverance to a worthier servant than I. on these videos is ridiculous my goodness a few moments later all right here we are again finally got the graphics settings seemingly working so let's hope that with obs running it still continues we're excited to get back in this one see what kind of play style we're gonna do this first episode we're just gonna kind of go over the classes so if you've already seen this kind of skip to the end i'll try and mark it out dark crusader paladin of the dark crusaders an elite military order in service to the church of orion Res radiance spreading the teachings of the church and orius via whatever means necessary a physically powerful class suitable for those who favor a more aggressive approach. I like that via whatever means necessary. That's good. That speaks to me. Hollowed Knight or Hallowed Knight since it's close to Halloween. A stalwart knight whose loyalty to the cleric and the Hallowed Sentinels is matched only by their determination to destroy Adir and the Rogar. A class focused on physical prowess bolstered by radiance. That okay, seems pretty, pretty tough and durable. Remember, we're deciding this together, so... We gotta take a look at all the different settings and stats and everything. And if you don't really know, just give me your opinion. Which one looks coolest? Udaronger Werewolf. Warwolf, a hardened champion from the land of Udoranger who has proved them themselves worthy of their people's honored rank of Warwolf by completing the requisite ancient trial of one which few survive. A devastating but lightly armored class driven by raw strength for good or ill. So tons of strength, not very quick. That seems silly to be lightly armored and have a ton of strength, but hey, you know, no ability to dodge, no toughness. That's, that's a toughie, but we can check it out. Partisan. A dutiful Mornstead fighter whose sorrow at the ruination of their kingdom by occupying forces only fuels their defiant struggle in its name, whether fighting up close with their steel flail or from range with a crossbow. Strong and dependable all-rounder class. This guy is kind of all around. Seems generic. Mornstead Infantry. A seasoned Mornstead foot soldier whose time in the mud and blood and tumult of battle taught them the value of agility, speed, and keeping the enemy at a distance. Class for those who favor dexterity and light defense over strength and bulky armor. So it looks like a guy who throws things at people, like javelins maybe, and also stabs people from a distance with a shield to protect themselves. Seems kind of like a slower approach to fighting where you keep things more controlled. Something to consider. Black Feather Ranger. Wow, this guy's dressed to impress. A member of the elite band of rangers who patrolled the forests of the Fief of King Rangar before a terrible curse born of grief lay waste to their home. An accessible class ideal for those who prefer versatility over a more focused approach. Alright, I thought that's what the last guy, or the partisan guy was, but looks like this is a high agility class. So this guy goes with an axe and a bow, it looks like. Kind of a mixture back and forth, whereas the partisan, I believe, was the flail and the crossbow. So it's kind of a more... Uh, Rangery approach, appropriate name. The Exiled Stalker. This is what we went with last time. That, and we went with Condemned. A former Imperial Assassin, their downfall and subsequent banishment from their homeland has made of them a nomadic cutthroat, killing swiftly and efficiently for nothing more than coin. A challenging class to master, but also a lethally effective one. We did this one with daggers, and it was fun, but we ended up switching to big old dual weapons. So, we'll see. Something to consider. Orion Preacher, a wandering preacher whose unshakable faith in the divine will of Aureus guides their way while they spread his holy light. 
a physically vulnerable class reliant on radiance, whether for protecting or searing the sinful flesh of heretics. Do we want to be the holy, holy overweight guy bringing the magic to bear to light people up? And then we'd have to stick with this humongous hammer. See if we could just smash people with it once in a while when we ran out of magic. I remember these stupid things don't really restore much until you get the higher level ones. But he obviously focuses on Radiance. If we did this guy, we could focus on Radiance-based weaponry. If I remember correctly, there were weapons that used the magic pads. That's something to remember in this game, is if you play one of the mages, you have weapons that scale off of magic damage, and so you get kind of the best of both worlds, if that's what we're going for. Heck, maybe you guys tell me you want me playing a tank, and we try to survive in this game as long as humanly possible. I have no idea. It's going to be an adventure either way. The Pyrrhic Cultist, one of the coolest looking ones. A fervent worshipper of a deer who has sworn to see the natural order finally restored and humanity's one true god return to his rightful place as their ruler. A high risk class relying on proficiency in Inferno. High risk because his vitality, agility, strength, all these are low. So you're kind of locked into one way. Still, fun to play. We want to be blood and fire coming through. This is what we went with for our how to beat bosses guide, I believe a while back when we made it. Because the Condemned, if you get good at fighting bosses, these guys are just good enough because this darn bucket is the bee's knees. A wretched prisoner who has suffered indescribable torments, whether there ever was ever any truth in their guilt or not. A class for those who would rage at the fate and throttle adversity with unflinching blood-soaked hands. This poor gentleman was wrongly imprisoned, we know it, and now all he has is a lantern and a bucket! And I think these are advanced classes we've unlocked. So this is the Lord. I think we get this by doing the Adir ending. Gifted with inhuman strength and ferocity of the Rogar as a reward for their loyalty to a deer. Rogar are the giant guys that were on the bridge, if you remember back in the day, killing that guy. This exalted warrior carries out the will of their god while leaving a trail of butchery and incineration in their wake. An accessible class which trades... I find that hilarious. An accessible class, not unless, you have, not unless you've already beaten the game, jerks, which trades mobility and speed for sheer power. So this guy's slow and heavy hitting. Obviously tons of Inferno, even more than the cultist, but he has some endurance and vitality, so he's more like a fighter wizard. Kind of a neat combo. What the hell is with the look, though? Good lord. And Putrid Child, I believe we unlocked this by doing the Putrid ending. One who has gazed into the truth beyond the shroud and been born anew in the glory of the Putrid Mother, reveling in atrophy and manipulating death itself. An advanced class for those certain that supremacy lies in the eternal power of umbral, not base conjurings or eph ephemeral flesh and steel. I haven't played this guy yet, I don't think. Maybe I have, I don't remember very well. But this guy, I had unlocked him by going the Umbral route, which was really neat. The Umbral route was cool. It gave you a lot of Radiance and Inferno spells. The downside in this game is that you really can only have like four abilities on at a time on a quick bar, I think, if I remember correctly. And so it got to the point where I had too much cool stuff and I really couldn't figure it out. Which one, like, which ones were the best to have on there for my current situation? You had to kind of like go in to a situation, die and escape, and then plan out the rest of the situation ahead of time with your skills. Still, cool character to think about. So... Talk about the classes in the comments below. This is going to be a short video just because I wanted to knock out all the class types and kind of discuss with you guys which ones we play. Do we want to go with just one of the basic warrior types? Do we want to go with a ranger who also focuses on range? Let me know what you guys want to see. I don't really care what's overpowered. It doesn't matter. Trust me. We have beaten this game with the Condemned focusing on buckets as our fist weapons. We don't need a powerful class to win. I'm just looking more for role play and for fun purposes. Give me an idea. Write down a little story, a little cool idea of what we can play, and then we'll try to crank that out next time we come back. All right, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.